sinking deep in sin, uh, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me, now say, So 
things change And you're down in the valley Don't lose faith Or you're never alone For the God on the mountain Is still God in the valley Things go wrong Today, I want to talk about, we sang the song, A Wonderful Savior is Jesus My Lord. An interesting line in that song, He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock. The shadows of dry, thirsty land, He hideth my life in the depths of His love and covers me there with His hand. We're going to talk about the scripture where that comes from. Exodus chapter 20, 33, verse 17. The Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing which you have spoken, for you have found favor in my sight, and I have known you by name. Then Moses said, I pray you, show me your glory. And he said, I myself will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you, and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show compassion on whom I will show compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face. Nor no man can see me and live. Then the Lord said, behold, there is a place by me and you shall stand there on the rock. And I will, it will come about while my glory is passing by that I will put you in the cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take my hand away and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock and he covers me there with his hand. Moses was a mighty man of God. He had tremendous faith, but like all of us, he was human. And he wanted to see God's face. And Moses was honest with God about what he was feeling. Are you honest with God about what you are feeling? Do you hold things back from God because you think God wouldn't understand? Did you ever think that God already knows anyway? So we just as well tell him everything was on our mind, just as well say it because he already knows it. <laughs> when led by God, we do not see God's face, but his backside. When led by anyone, we don't see their face, we see their backside. Whenever we go to the store, 
them boys will take off. We get there and they'll take off. And I'll say, hey, where y'all going? Y'all don't know where we're going. If you take off, you can't see where I'm going. So how are you going to follow me if you're running off ahead of me? Aren't we just bad about that? If we'll run ahead of God and try to get ahead of Him and try to second guess Him. When in reality, we need to be behind God if we're going to be led by Him. We should not anticipate, try to anticipate or try to second guess God. You know, we do that with traffic sometimes when we're, we're driving. We try to anticipate what somebody's going to do. Boy, that's a mistake most of the time. But we surely shouldn't be trying to anticipate what God's going to do. I and mean, we should never try to hurry God. We get impatient, don't we? Hurry up, God. I've prayed. I've already prayed five minutes and you, and you haven't done anything yet. Or maybe I've prayed ten years and you haven't done anything yet. Well, God doesn't hurry. You know, it's kind of like out there in the refinery. We had a saying, if the boss got to, got to pushing you and trying to hurry you up, you look him right square in the eyes and say, if you don't like this speed, you sure ain't going to like the next one. So in other words, the harder he tried to hurry us, the slower we have, we're going to go. But God isn't like that. But he's not impressed by our impatience. Kind of, kind of weird, Bo, but you, you look back over things and you think about years ago what you were concerned with and how you were praying to God and how you were impatient. When you look back, you can see that God was working things out all along. 2020 hindsight. Chris Rose, in writing in Reader's Digest, said, it's a funny story, y'all, just get ready. As a real estate agent, I spent six months showing homes to one couple. At last, I found that two they liked, but they couldn't decide which one to buy. The wife and I returned to the second house, and she began wandering around for another look while I waited upstairs. Eventually, she told me that they would take the first home. I asked how she made her decision. She said, well, I was standing in the family room, the woman explained, and I asked God to give me a sign. Right then and there, a big old jet flew over on approach to the airport, and I knew that wasn't the house for us. So that's kind of interesting. The jet flew over, and she knew that she didn't want to live under the flight path on approach to an airport, because there'd be jets flying over all the time. So she asked God to give her a sign, and it was an old noisy jet. It's rare that God speaks to anyone that way, but it's a neat story. Sometimes God does. We want to put God in a box, don't we? God, this is how God does this and this and this and this. If he does anything else, it's not God. No, 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 no. If it goes against God's word, it's not God. We can know for sure. But God does things in ways that would blow our mind. A lot of times we don't even know what he does and when how he does it. But we're always looking for a sign. We just love it if God spoke to us the way he spoke to the mighty men of old. Boy, a burning bush would be nice, wouldn't it? Imagine Moses walking up on that burning bush and it, it didn't burn up. Did you ever light a Christmas tree? I used to light a Christmas tree after Christmas. I'd take it out in the yard just to show everybody in the house how dangerous a Christmas tree is. But you can take one match and hold it to that tree and it'll go whoo, big old ball of flame. But it doesn't last very long. Maybe, maybe 20 seconds. But this burning bush here, it just kept on burning. And that impressed Moses and got his attention. And then God spoke to him out of that, that bush. That would impress me too. Now these days it would be easy to rig something up to make it look like that. But this was back in the day. They didn't have all that trick photography and stuff. That was, it. that was something else. I always thought it would be more appropriate if God was going to speak to me to do it like he did to the, 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 the prophet Balaam and he used a donkey to talk to him. I always thought that would be appropriate to have a donkey tell me something if God had, had a word for me. But still, God gives us all kinds of signs, but often we aren't looking, are we? We have our mind made up about what God's going to do and how he's going to fix our mess what he wants us to do. The Holy Spirit deals with us and wants us to listen. You know, 
A good time to read the word is when we have a question. When we have a question, when we have an issue, it brings us back to God, doesn't it? Imagine how our lives would be if we stayed close to God every day and we didn't have to go running back whenever we had a problem. But back to God's backside, which was all Moses got to see. If God is leading us, and as I said earlier, if anybody's leading you, you're going to be seeing their backside. So we need to be on the hind side of God, just like Moses. I had an uncle that was a preacher, and he used to like to say, he said, talk about folks, he said, they got the cart before the horse. And uh, that's what we do sometimes, isn't it? We get ahead of ourselves. Exodus chapter 33, verse 13, it says, Now therefore I pray you, if I have found favor in your sight, let me know your ways that I may know you, so that I may find favor in your sight. Consider too that this nation is your people. And he said, My presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. We have God's presence with us now in the form of the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit had not freely been given during the time of the Old Testament to all these mighty prophets. God's Holy Spirit spoke to them one-on-one, -on -one, but everybody wasn't allowed, you see. But now we have the Holy Spirit. We're asking for a sign. Well, the Holy Spirit is the sign. He's here all the time. We have the Bible, and that is our standard. It keeps us in line when we want to get off, stray off on our own. And if you're ever wondering, if you're hearing something, you think, is this the Holy Spirit or not? Well, the Holy Spirit will never go against the Bible. So it's good to have both. You can, the Holy Spirit will help you understand the Bible, and the, the Bible will tell you if you're thinking crazy when you're thinking God's telling you something that's not right. The two have to go together. Then you know that you know that you know when what you're hearing from your spirit within aligns with the Bible, you know that you know that you know. 2 Timothy chapter 3.16 says, All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. I find it interesting. This is probably not a popular scripture in many churches today because it speaks of rebuking and correcting. And most people don't want to be rebuked or corrected. But that's another sermon. But which would you prefer? Let's say you're on your first day at college. This place, let's say it's Texas A&M. It stretches out for miles. Would you rather have them hand you a map? Or have somebody say, Hey, let me, let me lead you. I'm going that direction. I'll show you right where it is, you see. Well, we've got both now, don't we? Maybe if you were going to, uh, let's say maybe you were moving in to uh, the Swan Manor. Would you rather have a map or would you have somebody take you and show you around and tell you everything, you know? Would you rather have a schedule or would you have somebody tell you what's going on? You see how it works together? God gave us the written word. But then he gave us the Holy Spirit to be our personal guide as we go through our journey. If we want to know God's will, we must get to know God. Our guidance from God hinges on our relationship with him. If we seek the guide more than the guidance, we just might see the sign we are looking for. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You see, we get things confused. We get in a bind, and then we go ask God for help. We hadn't had anything to do with him in months, but all of a sudden we're going to God for help. If we've spent all those months seeking God, trying to be what God wants us to be, seeking his righteousness, then when trouble comes, and it always will, God's right there. We're already hooked up with Him. Maybe we get our answers a little bit quicker that way. But the main thing is, you know, you can read in the Bible 
that God will bless you and will, will give you things and people start getting all thinking about, all they're thinking about is what can God do for me? And the thing about it is, that's the wrong way of going about it. What we need to be thinking about is what can I do for God? And when we put God first, seek ye first the kingdom of God, then all these other things will be added unto us. And probably some of them things we might have been wanting, God would wind up telling us that we didn't need that. That's another lesson too. But God is with us in the valley and God is with us in the mountain. You might say, God, where were you when all that stuff was coming down around my ears? Say, God would say, I was right there. Nothing happens that surprises God. He always knows. Romans chapter 8, verse 38 says, For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That seems backwards, doesn't it? He says, Take my yoke upon you, which is a burden, a load, and you'll find rest. Wait a minute, God, that doesn't make sense. Well, there you go. You're trying to think for yourself instead of listening to God. God says, Take my yoke upon you, for my burden is light. When we take God's yoke, you see, we've had things backwards for too long. When take, we take God's yoke upon us and we start putting God first and doing God's work, He'll smooth things out and make it all easier. And it doesn't seem like work anymore. It don't seem like we're struggling anymore because we're doing God's work and God has given us strength. It's a rest that reaches the core of our being. The rest that is spoken of here is a rest that comes while we are on our journey. It's not merely a stopping of activity, struggle, or journey. It's not a coffee break. It's not an all expenses paid vacation. It is a calmness and a security that comes through walking with God. There's a story. Here's another good story. It's kind of funny, but it's true. There's a story of the two birds perched high above a busy city, watching all the people busily, busily scurrying from one activity to another. The robin said to the sparrow, why do these humans scurry to and fro? Perhaps, said the sparrow, they do not realize they have a heavenly father like ours that cares for them so. You ever think maybe that's the truth? The, the, the birds have figured it out, but we, it still passes by that we have a God that takes care of us and we have not taken hold of that concept. The old song comes to mind, His eyes on the sparrow. And that's straight out of Scripture. And then Exodus chapter 33, verse 17, the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing of which you have spoken, for you have found favor in my sight and I have known you by name. Now, we find God's favor by accepting Jesus. And after we accept Jesus, God knows our name. John 10, 14, I am the good shepherd and I know my own and my own know me. Maybe we just need to have a little talk with Jesus. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And in closing, we have not because we ask not. James chapter one, verse five says, but if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. When we ask God for help, we ask God for an answer. He's going to give it. We may, we may have a hard time accepting it. And it may be a while before it hits us that God answered us. But God will answer you. Because God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Amen? Well, let's sing one more song.
sun clad morning when this life is over I'll fly away to a land where joy shall never end I'll fly away I'll fly away oh glory I'll fly away when I die hallelujah by and by I'll fly away Oh, when the saints go marching in Oh, when the saints go marching in Oh, Lord, I want to be in the number When the saints go marching in Make a circle be unbroken Glory and by, Lord, by a better place within in the sky, Lord, in the sky. And I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by. When I die, hallelujah, by and by. When I die, hallelujah, by and by.